I was good friends with Brian Curry, one of the co-writers uh, for years. He was an actor who was in a couple of our movies. And he put, at small roles, I ran into him somewhere, and I, and I said, what's going on? I said, I'm writing a screenplay. And I said, what is it? He said, uh, you know, it's a, it's a story based on my friend's father. It's a story about a black concert pianist named Don Shirley, who lived above Carnegie Hall. And in 1962, he, his record company sent him on a tour of the South, and he was understandably nervous, so he went down to Copacabana and hired the toughest bouncer in New York City, a guy named Tony Lip, seventh grade education, Italian kid. And uh, they hit the road together. I was like, the home run. I said, that's, that's an amazing story. We had a lot of material to go with. Uh, Tony Lip had, before he passed away, had left a tape where they videotaped him and audio taped him a different time, uh, telling the story in detail, like hours of tapes. And then this happened, and then that happened. We also had all the letters that he had written home on the trip. So we went through the letters, and we went through the tapes, and we listened to the story, and then we told uh, it the best way we could. It's called Green Book because of the Negro Motorist Green Book, which was used from 1936 to 1964 by black Americans when they traveled. Uh, it was uh, uh, something they could pick up only at Esso gas stations, by the way. They made, they, they, Esso was the only gas station that welcomed black uh, travelers. The others, they didn't want you to stop there. But Esso welcomed them, and they had the Negro Motors Green Book, which told them uh, where to, it wasn't, pub, it was uh, not published by uh, Esso, but it was sold there. It, it was uh, written by a man named Mr. Green, who uh, had once traveled through the South, a black man, and had a hard time finding places to eat, sleep, you know, get a haircut. So he wrote a book, and it, it published all the places across the country where uh, black travelers could eat, uh, you know, uh, sleep, uh, get, go to a hardware store. You know, it made it, it safe for them. Vigo and, and Mahershala have phenomenal chemistry together, and, and on and off screen. On screen, I was expecting that because they're both, you know, the highest level actors. They're, they're, I, di I didn't expect anything but them to have good chemistry on screen, and they do. But off screen, they do too. Vigo is a very, he's a, like, he has an amazing attention to detail. And he's always thinking of the bup, 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 bup. And, uh, and Mahershala is more of a Zen master who just kind of lays back there and comes in and does his thing and then steps away. When Linda came in, uh, I guess the thing that separated her was the chemistry with Vigo. Um, they just fit together. And they were kind of finishing each other's sentences. They seemed like a married couple. They seemed like they'd known each other since they were teenagers, which Tony Lip had with his wife. Uh, and, and, and they just... You, there were just a lot of lot of reasons that you know she she also is Italian, Linda, and she you know she the, it was coming out of her, you know you could just feel it. 